Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for a Creep Show animated special, and it is coming to Shudder on the 29th, Thursday, October 29th. So I'm putting this review out early because I got a screener from Shudder. Thank you, Shudder. Um, and for that reason, it'll be no spoilers. Also, I can't give synopses of the two stories involved with this because it's been asked that we don't give any sort of indicators on plot or storyline with the with the stories because they don't want you know people's experiences to be ruined with the show, which makes sense, which I wasn't going to do anyway because I always do these as no spoilers anyway. So no problem there, um, but just no, no spoilers. But once everyone sees it, we can go ahead and have spoiler talks in the comments, so just know that. Uh, so this one stars Kiefer Sutherland as the main uh, voice acting for the first story, and Joey King as the main acting for uh, voicing for the second story. Now, J most people know Kiefer Sutherland. I don't need to go into movies for him, but for Joey King, she was in such things as The Act, Slender Man, uh, Independence Day Resurgence, Quarantine, and The Conjuring. So... So had a lot of work. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, there were some portions missing for the portion that I saw. Now, you guys will be getting the finished version. I got a few where the animations weren't colored. It was just kind of sketches at certain points. And there was like a running time on my screen. So it would be much cleaner for you guys, but I could look past that stuff and do, you know, get a, get a good experience with it. So it was, it was interesting because, because this was animated... In the beginnings, typically, there's an animation with the episodes of Creep Show on Shutter, where the um, the creep in the beginning is animated, and then it goes to the real life, um, you know, real life stories shot in real life. So uh, they flipped it in this one, and the creep is real life, and then it goes to animation, which I thought was cool. But then they keep it animation at the end, so I I thought it was a cool kind of twist to it. Um, now that said, the animation style. I don't think everyone's going to like the animation style. For me, it was a little weird at first, but I did get used to it. I also see that it's kind of a time saver version of doing animation, um, but it's going to be a personal preference thing. Like some people will really like the animation. Some people will really not like the animation. It's one of those where there's not a whole lot of movement. It's not full animation as in like people's, you know, mouths are moving while they're talking and, and articulating normally. It's one of those ones where it kind of sets the scene it's like a hybrid between actual animation and a comic book cell. So it kind of sets the scene. And then there are just articulations at certain points in the scene. At the, and those things move a little bit, but not everything. So like a prime example would be, you know, say I'm the animation cell and I have my arms like this. So maybe just my arm moves like this during it because I'm doing something. Or both my arms move or I just do like a movement like this. You know, it's not full articulation. So, like I said, it was a little weird for me at first, but I got used to it. Um, but that said, the animation looks pretty good. It does look good. And it's I think it's fun to do an episode like this. It's away from the norm. Uh, so the stories are... Uh, the stories are... Um, the first one is called Survivor Type, and that is based on a Stephen King story. And the second one is called... Twittering from the Circus of the Dead, and that is based on a Joe Hill story. So we're doing the Stephen King family stories, which, you know, that's not a big departure from what Creepshow has been doing. They have pulled from Joe Hill before, they've pulled from Stephen King before, so this is really no exception. Uh, there are some animated cameos in the stories that I will not tell you about, so just be on the lookout for those when you watch it. Those are always fun, those little bits of, uh, you know, Easter eggs. I like it. So, with the first story, uh, because of the, the animation style, and this actually holds true for both the stories, honestly, uh, when movements happen, things morph in kind of weird ways, so sometimes it just looks a little odd and doesn't seem like it's really working, especially with face, facial things. Like, when faces are moving in certain ways, like the morphing of them and the animation looks really weird. So that's one of the things I didn't really like, but... You kind of get past that. You get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. There is a solid way that the story gradually reveals itself with darker portions of the overall story, but also keeping kind of a nonchalant conversational tone to it to keep it moving. So it's dropping like these darker pieces in there that do resonate with you, but then it keeps moving in a very nonchalant way where, you know, you, you don't have a full 
the full time to really stop and reflect on that, which I think ends up working for the story in the end, because then once everything hits in the end and you, you know, everything stops after that, you have more time to think. And then that makes you think back even further in the story to those little darker pieces that were kind of littered throughout the story until the very, very end. Keith or Sutherland's sorry Keith for Sutherland's voice acting in this is excellent he does an amazing job with this you can feel the emotion you can hear everything in his voice it is outstanding it is a great narration for this I, I really really did enjoy it uh, so in the end the story is a very human one that plays on the surface but it also plays more inward as kind of a look at who people are and who they become through events and choices within their own lives. So that doesn't give anything away, but you'll know what I'm talking about once you've seen it and then you hear that. Now, I will say the ending for me, I thought was pretty uh, unsettling. So obviously it had impact. So I liked the overall story of it. It was good. I, I did enjoy it. Now, on to the second one. Oh, I guess I should give a star rating just for that one. So out of five stars with half stars and play that particular story, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, I give it a three and a half, three and a half stars. Pretty solid. I did enjoy that one. Uh, so Twittering from the Circus of the Dead. This was the Joe Hill story. Uh, there's a real younger generation perspective to this, which annoyed me a little bit. I know for some viewers, they're really going to hate this story because of the ge the younger generation perspective to the entire story. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. It's very much seen in the narration. It's not just the content of it, which some people may, may not like the whole approach to how the story is told. Uh, but I think even more so people are not going to like the narration of it by Joey King because of the character that she is portraying uh, can be very annoying for people and was quite annoying for me. I got a little bit used to it and was able to see past it for the full experience of the story itself. But I know some people are really going to hate this one because of that character, because of the character through which the entire story is being told. So be prepared. Uh, the narration style by the main character keeps the story from being scary and suspenseful, which kind of sucks, but also has an, a, an ultimate point to it. So I'm okay with it for that reason. I, I, I wanted to be able to experience it as a little more scary and suspenseful, but I understand the point of it. So I'm okay with that being used. Once again, I think that's something that people are not going to like about this though. Um, the animations end up becoming very interesting as it gets further to the end of the story because it goes from being a more simplistic animation in the beginning, not how it's animated, but you know what's in frame, what's actually going on. It's pretty stationary and not very interesting at first, but then it gets more interesting, more interesting until towards the end, it's getting very interesting and there's a lot more going on on screen. So it becomes a lot more engaging and, and fun. The story has a very satirical bent to it uh, that's tied to social media use and how it influences human reactions. So once again, that doesn't give anything away about the story, but once you've seen it, you'll understand what I mean by that. So in the end, I felt like it was a pretty good finish to it. Um, the story I didn't feel like was as impactful as the first one, but the nature of what they're trying to say with it and the delivery specifically of the narration of the main character kind of keeps it from being as impactful. Uh, but I think that's, you know, kind of intentional with it. So both of them I thought were pretty, pretty decent. So this one uh, with possibility of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to put this one at a 2.5, two and a half. I'm going to put it right in the middle. I, w I was thinking about going a three because I do like the story. I do like the overall theme of it. But that narration is, it's a little bit tough to enjoy and it messes with enjoyment of the story for me and I think for a lot of other people too. But some people will be totally fine with it, so whatever. So um, yeah, so 3.5 for the first one, 2.5 for the second one. I don't think that's bad at all. I would say obviously that averages out to this episode. I give it a three out of five stars. I do recommend watching it, especially if you've seen all the other episodes of Creepshow. 
um, I think in general, usually with the with the creep show episodes, it would be like one of the stories was was pretty good and the other story was eh. Um, with this, I think it's a little bit better than that, maybe. So, yeah. But uh, I enjoyed it, and I'm interested to see what other people think. Like I said, we can do spoilers in the comments once people have seen it, once it's out on Thursday, the 29th of October. So then let's talk spoilers. Um, do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button. That is your best way to repay me for this video or any video I've ever done, and I do really appreciate that. It really does make me you know, more motivated to keep doing these videos when I see that because I'm not getting paid to do this or anything. It's just for the love of doing these reviews, you know, and knowing that people are actually consuming it out there. But if you are going to do that, also hit that, uh, the notification bell, uh, because that way, you know, when I'm putting up new reviews or unboxings or doing live streams, any of that stuff. But regardless, thanks for taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.